In today's video, we will be launching the final shell of our polar satellites, but these will be a medium range satellites, which means they will be able to reach the planets of the inner, basically, Kerbal system. And by inner, I mean Duna and uh, Eve for the most part. So let's first research the advanced construction because it will give us some fairings, etc. So then we have a total of 1,297 signs, which means which can, we can actually research quite a lot. Uh, miniaturization uh, or precision propulsion. Precision propulsion might be handy because it will give us the ant-like engine, so I'm gonna take that. Advanced fuel systems, I'm not sure about that one yet. I have a lot of other things that I want to... So, miniaturization or precision engineering. Uh, okay, miniaturization is a requirement for a precision engineering, good to know. So, I'm gonna actually go miniaturization. And then I'm going to go with the precision engineering because it will give me the fuel tanks for these tiny probes as well as some science experiments. So I'm definitely going to take that one. And as you can see, we have advanced relays, antennas and stuff that will go up to 200 gigameters. And I actually need those. Okay, we have remote guidance and whatnot here, phased array. That one I don't think we need right now. However, the electronics I might actually take because it gives me a lot of more interesting experiments. Then we have the advanced electrics, we have the heat management. I don't think we need heat management. Recycling we could use, but let's go first for the juicier ones. Uh, heavy rocketry, I'm definitely gonna take that one because it will give me some engines like uh, top level and etc. So now, then we have advanced exploration that gives us the telescope among other things and the ladders, which I really need. Uh, then we have 267, so which we're gonna take advanced electrics. And now we have 100, so that leaves us with one of 90. So either we go with the recycling or we go with the aerodynamics. We have here water splitter and whatnot. Uh, I'm gonna actually take that one, and that leaves us with 17 science, so. Let's first make sure that we use all of our available science points, some to advance the space plane hangar, because soon enough I will be doing planes. And uh, let's kick in the afterburners. I could argue that we could start designing things now, but let's say that all of the Kerbals went on vacation, except for the scientists who have been di doing diligently. Speaking of things, I really want to start booking the transfers to Duna, Jewel, and um, and uh, Eve, because sooner rather than later we're gonna be getting the uh, we're gonna be getting the windows. So might as well, you know, make sure that we take care of those. All right, there we go. So, okay, now what we want to do is we want to be building our medium-range satellites. So. First thing, as always, we start with the Octo-2 probe core, then we have the SAS unit, followed by... Uh, I'm actually gonna take this struts, and it's the tiny struts, the one we have just researched, and then we have the tiny fuel tank, we have which we have just researched, and then we're gonna take the spider liquid fuel engine, which is basically the same as Ant, except this one is attached radially. And the reason why I wanted, is I could take then this big R... 08 relay antennas because those shoot up to 800 to 200 gigameters. I've attached some batteries on the side uh, and then I want to be attaching the reflectron to be able to control it from short ranges. Then we want to be placing another antenna and I'm actually sick of Communitron 16. Is there any other that could be Omni that has higher range? So let's see. Uh, no, no, oh, Comtech, oh, you have three million, oh, okay, so that there is our candidate, Comtech something, relay medium, I think I'm gonna go with this one, so let's place that one here on the top, so let's see what it does look like, ooh, it extends a great deal, I'm actually taking that one for starters, I really want to do something different this time, Okay, then we have the solar panels. We're gonna be placing four at the top and we're gonna be placing a set of two at the bottom. Yeah, 
those will ensure that we have plenty of power because these antennas are hungry. Uh, a reflectron I'm gonna place on this side. And uh, that's my design for the, uh, for the satellite. This would be the Kerbin Polar Medium Range Satellite. I know you guys are probably already sick and tired of me actually doing the satellites, but the thing is, the more shells you do, the more redundant it gets. And now, with the medium range introduced, we really start, should start sending probes to Duna and to EVE to start collecting science. Of course, we are far away from sending the lander craft or the because of the life support thingy, but as you can as you saw, we have started to take the landers to Moon and Minmus. So once we're there, we're gonna be taking the craft all the way to Duna. So right. But the windows are opening and we should be starting planning soon. In the first wave of windows, we will be sending the probes. In the second, we will be sending the actual landers. So, okay, that being said, I'm actually designing now the launcher vehicle. And as always, that one has a probe core on its own. It has a fairing and for fairing, we need to make sure we have to have the ride share adapter battery nothing you know too fancy so uh, communitron yes it doesn't need to go very far it only needs to have a range basically up to the height that you can deploy and this would be the first one that has no crew so this one will be fully automatic we can do that now because we have better redundancy of our relay network so then we do a stack separator and then we're gonna place one satellite and then we're gonna take another stack separator. Oh, this one is clipping. I don't like it. Let's place it over here. Okay, so the next one we placed on top and we place another one. We want once again two relays because they're going in polar and they're going to go. One is gonna be a elliptical with high above North Pole. Another one will be elliptical high above South Pole. Right, placing the cross section, that's the fairing. We're gonna go with the clamshell deploy. This will be a rather simplistic rocket, I think. Shouldn't be too much, you know, of faffing around. Medium reaction wheels. Okay, let's place custom groups. We'll be activating the antennas and then going with the solar panels. So just making sure that we do all those things. And then for the three, we're gonna be expanding the big antennas, the relays. All right, so there we go. Gr group 10 and nine should be the deployer. There we go. And I think now we should be making sure I'm just disabling the torque wheels because I don't want them fighting for control over the craft uh, as we are ascending. I will enable them later on. So 1.8 would be the form factor de jour. So we're gonna definitely use that one to increase it. Okay, so now let's see, uh, we have these engines are staged correctly, fairing deployment, and now let's continue. So now we have this engine, all right, and that is our stage that will be get getting us places. Good. Right, so now comes the next decoupler, and we come with a bigger fuel tank. Shall we take the Bagora? No. Ghidorah, no, we don't have 1.87 meters, so I'll have to go with the regular fuel tanks. Oh boy, okay, tell you what. Uh, do we have a fuel adapter? Nope. Uh, I'm actually thinking, yeah, I'm gonna go with 1.8 meter form factor. I'm just gonna make the rocket look white, and then we have our engine, like the Bobcat at the bottom. That one is good enough, I would say. So that gives us a total of 5,041 meters per second delta V. And then I'm gonna be placing these fuel tanks. There we go. One more. And then we, go, we put two swivels. And then I'm gonna be placing, let me just align them, good. And then one more of these fuel tanks above. And I think we can actually go with a small tank even that will give us more than we need, way more than we need, 6.000 meters per second. Okay, fair enough. Let's put the separatrons. Now, this is the first time I'm using them. Separatrons are the tiny rocket motors that will help separate these 
uh, boosters. Normally, I think it would even work that we could sep those could get separated on their own, but we're gonna replace them in their own stage, so. And then we're gonna be placing the fuel lines, so they f the side boosters are feeding into the main tank. Okay, good. Uh, let me check my staging. Uh, yeah. Now, first the engine fires, then the uh, two boosters fire, then the decouplers together with the separatrons, and then the upper stage. I think it's that's it. So, final thing that we need to do is we need to find a suitable launch pad. I'm actually thinking we're going with a rectangular one, like the Titan, I think. That would be the Titan 3 launch stand. That looks good. Modular service tower. There we go. Let's place those up, up and away. Okay, that might be a little bit too high. No, I guess it's good. Let's put the top. There we go. I'm getting, I'm, I'm getting better at this stuff. Okay, so let me see. Oh, there is a Titan 3 mast. Let's place the mast. Oh, now we're talking. Sexy. Okay, so let's see if we can place the the hole down, which would be the hole down clamps holding it. Come on, general hole down clamps. I think two of them will be enough. There we go. I think that looks good. Or oh, maybe should we place it on the side? I don't think we can attach it on the side. Oh, can we? Nah. Okay. The sparkers, good. And I think that's it. Okay, we need to place the umbilicals, obviously, because they will be keeping the rocket fueled. And let's make sure that we can roll out the deployer until we get the morning. So I want to have either the, I want to have a daytime launch. All right, it's gonna go out in five minutes as the, we roll it. Three, two one and getting ready for the ignition and igniting the engine and there we go we have cleared the tower by the way this rocket has a slighter slightly smaller thrust to weight i think its initial one is around 1.2 so it almost starts up like saturn 5 but uh, yeah and this one we are angling towards the north because it will be going into the polar orbit. There we go, look at it go. All right, so the boosters will soon be expanded and we will ditch them. Three, two, one, and booster separation confirmed. And now our thrust weight is once again at 1.4, which I, it is sufficient, it's not great, but it's sufficient. And we are pointing, we are now aligning our prograde marker to be with the orbital prograde. So there we go. Sorry, orbital uh, polar prograde. We are going straight for the North Pole. Okay, the alignment is fixed and now we are just pointing downrange and hopefully we will get there soon enough. Alright, 82, 83, 84. And 100, perfect. Now let's circularize. There we go. Okay, so now we're gonna be using the flight computer to do this maneuver. So we're definitely gonna be pointing node prograde and let's sure we make we can circularize. Let's dim the fairing. We are extending the solar panels. All right, and now point the node prograde and make sure that we say execute the plan maneuver. And we leave everything to the flight computer. This is one of the benefits of playing with the remote tech. I really love it. It's awesome. So yeah, it, it wobbles a little bit, but I think we will be doing just fine. All right. 100 meters per second and let's see if it's circularized beautiful 100 by 100 i couldn't ask for more all right so now the next order of business is deploying the satellites and i'm pretty sure you guys have actually seen me do that 
numerous times, so I'm gonna do a little bit of, you know, cut and edit it, and I've actually launched two of them, so I'm gonna be launching two of them pretty much simultaneously, or at least show it that way to you guys. So what we're gonna do is we're gonna be placing into, I'm thinking 400 by 400 orbit, so, or 300 by 300, I'll, I'll have to see. But uh, all in all, definitely gonna go and burn. So here we go, holding maneuver prograde, making sure that we circularize and then at the 300 kilometer periapsis, I want to be going for the 900 kilometer apoapsis and then igniting the stage in terms of these engines. Okay, target active vessel, target, and here we're gonna be placing Duna. All right, and then for the second one, we're gonna do this, all right. So same thing except for the South Pole. So I've accelerated this for your benefit because I know guys that you have been seeing me deploying these satellites forever and the benefit of it is, I mean, in terms of being able to communicate and everything else. We really need those when we're playing with remote tech to be able, oh, it's dancing. We are able to use the remote tech relay network so that we can control the probes. It's basically part of our deep space network and Overall, I think it will be working lovely. All right. So soon enough, I hope the KSP2 will be launching soon. I cannot wait to start playing it. Do let me know what you guys will be most interested into when playing the Kerbal Space Program 2. I think uh, it will be a lot of interesting topics to cover. What are you most interested in? Getting started, guys, or you want to see a Let's Play? Do let me know in the comments below. I will read through them and probably implement one of those. So, speaking of that, same thing here. Target, Kerbin, Duna, and activate. All right, so, by the way, guys, we will be deorbiting this stage. So the reason why I was deploying this relay network is because in the next one episode, that actually, if it aired, you will be able to see it in the top right corner. We will be launching, building and launching probes that will be going to Duna and EVE. So if you haven't checked that out and the video is live, do check out the top right corner as there you will see why we did the, what we just did. And look at this beautiful satellite. Isn't it worth it on its own? I certainly think so. Thank you very much for watching. I'm Groundforks and I'll see you in my next video.